Meg, this sounds like something straight out of a movie. A mysterious man pulls up and tries to get a young girl inside of his truck. Tonight, that was not a movie. It was real, and it happened in Kalkalan. And more breaking news. We have a crew on the way to a scene of another active situation in Mount Morris Township. We've got reports of a fire that started around 10 this evening at the Sulphic apartment complex on Sulphic Court. Again, this started around 10 o'clock and we do have a crew on the way to the scene and we will bring you more information as it comes into the continuous news center. Hey Meg, good evening. For some people who drive in the left lane, that's just the way they drive. But state police say people who drive that way well, that's a good way to get a ticket. On his first full day in office, President Donald Trump toured CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia. The president has often criticized the U.S. intelligence community, but praised it yesterday. Earlier this month, President Trump questioned the intelligence community's conclusion that Russia interfered with the U.S. presidential election. But now he denies ever being upset and is blaming the media. Well, good evening. It's a day these residents of this neighborhood won't soon forget after their street turned into something that looked like it was straight out of a movie. An estimated 2 million people crowded into New York City's Times Square last night to say goodbye to 2016 and hello to the new year. The country's biggest New Year's Eve party came with stepped up security, 7,000 police officers uniformed and undercover, along with bomb sniffing dogs patrolled the area. Police also watched from the sky to make sure the massive crowd welcomed in the new year without incident. Hey, good evening. It's a scene that we all hope we never have to experience. Your home on fire and your kids still inside. It happened to a mid-Michigan mother last night and this evening. She's thankful to be alive and is sharing her story that you'll only see on 5. No one is displaced tonight, even after a cooking fire burned through a local motel today. The fire broke out of Flint Township's Economy Motel around 9.30 this morning. Flint Township's fire chief tells TV5 everyone managed to escape unhurt, and all 12 units were damaged, but the people staying inside the units were giving a new place to stay, so no one is without a place to live tonight. The Red Cross stepped in to offer victims new clothing. Live and local with coverage you can count on. This is WNAM TV5 Wake Up. And Happy New Year to you. It is 2017. Hard to believe it is already here. I'm Cameron Bruno, and thank you so much for spending the first day of the year with us. I'm joined by meteorologist Dan Drew in the First One Five Weather Center. And Dan, it feels like I haven't seen you all year. Well, we saw each other about an hour ago, so I don't know. Well, nah, I know. I you know. Yeah, I had, had to ruin it for him. I fun. had to spoil it Spo for him. Spoils the fun. But you know what? <laughs> How's the weather? Right. The new guys, it's a very fluid situation right here as we follow this breaking news. Uh, less than a half hour ago, we got reports of a man who had jumped into the Saginaw River. We now know that this is the end of a police chase. Let me step out of the way and show you what's going on behind me. You see a blue two-door Honda that the uh, police officers and tow truck guys are about to pull from out of the tree. This car came down Harrison. We're at the corner of 41st and Harrison. We are immediately north of the James Clement Airport in Bay City. You can't go any further south than where we are now. So that's where this chase ended. He came around Harrison at a high rate of speed, went not through the open fence that you see to the left of me, but under the fence. He went under the fence, through the bushes, and crashed into the tree. From there, the man we now know that was on this chase that started in the township a few miles away, ran from here and into the Saginaw River. Police have just now left this scene and went a few blocks away where they are pulling that man out of the river. Dive teams, officers from the Sheriff's Department and Bay, um, Bay City Police are here taking care of the scene and from there. We're going to head there in moments to see where this chase has now ended as they are pulling this man that we now know was in a police chase, dumped the car here after crashing it, jumped into the Saginaw River on a very cold March day and is now being pulled out by police as we speak. We'll bring you more right here on TV5 and WNEM.com. Reporting live in Bay City Cameron Riddle, WNEM TV 5 News. And the cop got out and started running, and then all I all I know is probably every cop in this whole town was down here within five minutes. Loni Burns heard sirens as she was standing in her driveway. Then suddenly, her quiet Bay City neighborhood became the most popular place in town as an eight-mile police chase ended dramatically right in front of her home. And when I come out of my house, I'm like, 
those are really close. And so I stepped out here on the sidewalk and I just kind of looked to the right and here comes that guy. And right behind him is a, is, a, is a state police and he's just right on him. Police have not yet released the identity of the man behind the wheel, but say the blue Honda he was driving was reported stolen Monday. Police spotted the car in Hampton Township this afternoon and the suspect took off, eventually leading police to Harrison Street in Bay City, where he hit a curb, lost a tire, then crashed through a fence and into a tree. And he looked scared when he was, because I, I seen his face straight and I was like, he looks scared. When the suspect crashed his car, he then hopped out and led police on a foot pursuit through the snow and woods toward the Saginaw River. Police say the suspect was in the freezing water for at least 20 minutes before police could pull him out of the water a half mile away at the Cass Avenue boat launch. Witnesses say they'll never forget this day that looks like something they've only seen on TV. Oh man, that, it was so much fun. I got to see all of it. It was supposed to be the TV show counts. <laughs> And the suspect was brought out of the water at this boat launch behind me. He was then taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Still no word yet on what charges he may face. I had to just get them out. The smoke was so, it was just so loud in there that... I had to get them out quickly and myself. Beatrice Collier's life changed in an instant last night as her apartment went up in flames. Tonight, she and her family and at least a dozen of her neighbors are sleeping at a local hotel after losing their homes. Collier and her boyfriend Giovanni Jones lost everything. The couple's five children, ages seven, five, three, and a set of four-month-old twins escaped the fire with just the clothes on their back. I didn't have no shoes. They didn't have any shoes, nothing. I just had to get them out the house. I wasn't thinking about grabbing anything but just them. Firefighters say the fire started in a bedroom where one of her children was playing with a lighter that caught the bed on fire as his brother slept. I believe, you know, he was in there playing around and set the bed on fire. Um, and he, came, he ran in there and told me what he did and I was just concerned to get them out the house. At that time I wasn't, you know, concerned about why yeah, it was, but, getting them but out. just getting them out. Tonight, this family of seven is still together and stronger than ever, as they know they still have each other, while not forgetting about the other families that have also lost their homes. To all the families that's, you know, being affected by this, too, you know, I'm, I'm praying for them, too, and hoping that they get better and they can get back on their feet as much as we can get back on our feet, you know. And as you see here, all of the 22 of the units of this apartment building are empty tonight. All of the residents are have either been already placed in other apartments within this complex or others are staying at a nearby hotel. As for the Jones and Collier family, they're still trying to plot their next move as the family does not have insurance. Reporting in Mount Morris Township, Cameron Riddle, WNEM, TV5 News. Hey, Frank, good evening. You know, dealing with the aftermath of the Flint water crisis involves understanding what's going on. Learning information and sharing it with others was the goal of tonight's seminar as residents still have questions to ask. We already paying for water that we can't drink. We already paying for water we can't cook with. So therefore, we continue to pay for stuff that we cannot use. But you say it's all right. To who? For who? Those are some of the questions that Bernadette Jefferson wanted answered tonight. She joined many other Flint residents attending a seminar on the Flint water crisis called Beating the Lead. She says after two years, there are still too many unanswered questions. And she feels far too often the elected officials aren't still. Stepping up. They're not in this room. They don't bother to come out to speak to us. We get second hand, third hand, fourth hand, fifth hand information, but we need some information that will safeguard, protect, help our children. There were no elected officials giving updates at tonight's yes. meeting. Laura Sullivan yes. says that's where residents like her come in. By day, she's a professor at Kettering University, but by night, she helps spread information about the water crisis. The more opportunities like this to catch that person who says, all right, I'll try this meeting and we'll see if, if I can get some answers that's, that make sense or seem honest to me. The more times I can do that, the better. The residents attending tonight's meeting were asked to share what they've learned that better days are on the way. So now, such as a community activist myself and a minister, now it's upon me. I'm responsible to go forth and tell the people in the churches, in the community, that we are moving forward and things are, are better than what they were. 
And organizers say this is not the last of these meetings. They say they'll keep having them as long as questions need answers. Live in Flint, Cameron Riddle, WNEM, TV5 News.